Good evening, all, and welcome to Calvert's Corner for this week's What You Play on Wednesday. I am Lord Calvert Geiler, Companion of the Meridian Cross, Companion of the Argent Comet, Companion of the Argent Lamp, Companion of the Falcon's Faith, and Reaper. Coming to you live, as always, from the Bearing of the Osprey on the southern coast of Meridiates. Now, this evening, I'm joined by Bishop Level Patron, Cat Charcuterie Board Connoisseur, and Taco vs. Tiara Poet, Fikin O'Higgin. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you. I'm surprised you let me back on, but I'm I'm glad to be here. At some point, you start running out of guests, and you just have to just sort of recycle what you got, you know? <laughs> no, uh, Fikin, I always love having you on. You are a dear friend of mine, and uh, you are fun to have. And I, I, I enjoyed updating your intro tonight to your with your new skill sets instead of the uh, you know, you, you've shifted. Uh, you've shifted industries on me. I'm not sure how I'm gonna, I, how I feel well, about it. it. It really comes down to this. It's winter time. Squirrels do that whole hibernation thing. They don't oh. really want to come out to the casinos. That's true. That's true. You, you have and a problem. It's not like Vegas, you know. I am literally making a cat's a charcuterie board mm -hmm. for a cat for someone who you know, love and respect. It, is is it my peer? I bet it's my peer. It is your peer. It's my peer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not even surprised. Not even surprised. All right. So uh, to, to our dear viewers, first of all, I want to apologize. We are a few minutes late tonight. Um, I'm really bad at time zones. So I, I if I was ever elected Grand Poobah of the world, uh, my first royal proclamation would be to dis would be to disallow the use of time zones because they make my life more difficult. Um, I, I double booked myself tonight in the last show we were sort of uh, finishing up. So that's that. But uh, we're happy to be here now. We're going to get started with the uh, the game tonight. Um, we also have, a, I'd like to thank my, my, my new temporary tech person, Shyla. Shyla's from the Outlands. I'm uh, helping train them to run their new show, Peering at the Outlands, which we just finished up running tonight. Uh, so she is going to be backstage <laughs> pushing some of the buttons for me and uh, helping in the comments and things. So make sure you put lots of comments in the chat and give her lots of work to do. That, that'd be great. Um, also, I'm not sure if we're actually on Facebook or not because you yelled at me and told me that I was late and then it deleted the Facebook stream. I think I've re-added it now. I don't know. We're just going to play the game, see what happens. So anyways, all right, so uh, Fikin, you actually requested this game. So uh, so what brought you to Hound and Jackals? What was your interest in it? Well, um, I was looking for a game that you hadn't done before. Right. That would right. be simple. And I actually had expected you to uh, go with, and you know her name, I don't. Sh Shyla? Huh? Shy no, no, I expected you to go huh. with... Um, our, our lovely Egyptian. Um, oh, uh, second. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I had I had picked one thinking that you would have gone with the obvious choice, and instead here I am. Right. Um, yeah. The uh, so yeah, I had I had second on when we did uh, Senate um, a while back. So yeah, that was a. Uh, She's a fun guest. It was, it was funny. It was one of the one of the early shows, and her her kid decided to interrupt in the middle of it, like running, like he ran in with like no pants on. It was always entertaining when children are involved with uh, live streams. So we try to keep uh, try to keep the, the half naked children off the screen, but it doesn't always work. So. Anywho, all right. So yeah, so Hounds of Jackals, uh, it, it's one of those race games. I I, I love it. Uh, it's super simple, uh, but. To get into the nitty gritty and to learn some rules for us, I'm going to pitch it over to my good friend Pascal. Hey, Pascal, take it away. Thanks, Future Cal. Hounds and Jackals is a race game dating back to the Middle Kingdom of Egypt, around 2000 BCE. Now, the game was originally discovered by William Petrie in 1890. Since then, there have been over 40 examples of the game board found across the Middle East. Now, we don't know exactly what the game was called in period. It picked up the name Hounds and Jackals after a find that included pieces that were, well, hounds and jackals. The game was also called 58 Holes, indicating the number of holes on the board, or the version we'll be playing tonight is the Palm Tree Game, as referred to by R.C. Bell. As with so many of these games, the rules we have are strictly from supposition, based on the boards or pieces that have been found. Here is presented just the one set that Bell presents in his book. The game is played by two players, each with five pieces, and a board consisting of 58 spaces, and either a four-sided die or four dice sticks. Players each start with one of their pieces occupying the first hole, the one closest to the palm fronds in our case, and rolling a die, moving their, their piece that number of spaces. On a roll of one, a new piece can be introduced. If a player lands in any of the fifth spaces, marked in gold, they get a bonus turn. Also, 
If they end their turn on any of the spaces connected by a line, they get to move up or down the line, just like in chutes and ladders. Now, only one piece can be on any space at a time. A player must make a move if they can, but if at any point they cannot move, then the opposing player gets to take the moves they would have used and add it to their turn as a bonus turn. The game ends when a player has all of their pieces into their opponent's base only by rolling the exact numbers. Any questions? Future Cal can help you out. Back to you. And I'm thanks, Shyla. <sighs> All right, guys, to me that kind of night. All right, so what I was saying was, uh, Streamyard did an update where I can now load videos directly in. But um, yeah, according to my wife and, and what I was seeing, it looks like slightly out of sync. So I think that is largely a, a facsimile. My computer is not quite strong enough to run a live stream, a video, and also have the screen share up. So. I'll uh, work on that for next time. So anyways, uh, so brief summary of the rules again. Uh, basically, this is like backgammon. Uh, this is one of two variations I've found. Uh, of So there's there's this one where you're literally playing either side and trying to get to the other person's base. The other version I found was one where you're actually trying to, both of you sort of have your own side getting to a central point. And you're, every, every time you get one of the central point, you get to take one of the other opponent's pieces off the board. That one to me was, a, there, was a, there were some rule problems with reading it where a couple of the rules didn't work. Like when you actually try to play the game, the rules didn't work right. Um, so the one I'm playing, the one we're playing tonight is the one presented by Bell in his book, uh, Board and Table Games. Uh, great book. If you never picked it up, uh, I found this on Amazon for relatively inexpensive. It's a really good book. has a lot of, of, of good rules in it. Most of what I do comes out of that book. So anyways... Uh, so yeah, let's play some, man. This is, uh, let me see if I can get this up. There we go. All right, so uh, as always, we'll be using uh, Roll20. And because this is Calvary's Corner and we cannot just do uh, Hounds and Jackals, we'll be playing Satyrs and Hydras tonight. Because, uh, you know, why not? So, Fikin, would you prefer to play Satyrs or Hydras? We'll give you the red or blue board to start with. I will go ahead and be a Satyr. You're going to be a Satyr? All right, so you'll be starting on red, going to blue. And then I'll be the Hydra starting on blue going to red. Uh, and I will let you go first. So go ahead and uh, make your first roll. So we'll be using a D4 for this. Um, both a four-sided die like they used in Roll Game of Ur uh, and dice sticks are both found in periods. So either one works. Uh, I prefer four-sided dice um, or six-sided dice when you can find them, much to dice sticks, if I can if I can help it. All right, so you got a four. So yeah, so basically for this, you're starting out. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of options. Uh, you'll have one piece to start to moving uh, to begin with. But at any point you roll a one, you can choose to bring another piece on the board uh, as a to give you more options to move. Okay, well, you don't have me on the correct page. Oh, that's a problem. Time out. Let me fix that. Uh, 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 uh. Here we go. There we go. You the right view now? Now, okay, so one, two, and three. There we go. All right, cool. I will roll. That's a two. I've got the 3D dice turned on, so we can see it. That's cool. One and two. Exciting rolls. Uh, so there you go. All right, so I'm gonna get. I'll get to some comments here. So I see uh, a, a longtime viewer, uh, Lady Catherine Throckmorton, out there. Greetings, Cat and Katie. Good to see you. And my, of course, my my ladies watching from the uh, the living room while they're having their spaghetti. Always good to see y'all out there. Uh, if you guys have any questions for us or a uh, question about the game or just questions for Fikin, uh, please toss them out there. Or questions for me. Uh, um, heck, if you have questions for Shyla back in the, in the, in the backstage, I'll, I'll make her answer questions in the comments. Yeah, we'll, we'll have fun with it. Yeah. So in addition to, of course, um, having a bankrupt squirrel casino um, and now trying to uh, make charcuterie boards for cats, I have been studying Old Norse poetry. You have oh, uh, pause for a moment. I just noticed something. Uh, so uh, on your move, you stopped on a space connected to a line, which means you get to follow that line up 
I can shoot some ladders. So you should go to that gold space at the end there. Okay. And now if I'm on that gold space, you get another turn. So okay. take, your, take your bonus turn and then it'll be your turn again as well. One, two, that's my bonus turn. And then this is your regular turn. Yeah. And um, let's get another satyr out on the board. There you go. All right, so, yeah, sorry. So catch our creature boards and go. Yeah, well, um, I've been doing that. But then, um, as some people may be aware, uh, Her Majesty uh, took umbrage with uh, my position in regards to tacos versus tiaras. And so I am currently uh, studying Old Norse poetry to try to uh, satisfy her uh, penance. It's your turn, sir. Yeah, I, it was funny when I when I uh, saw his. So so to to brag on you for a moment, there was a, the reason you got in trouble actually was for uh, your contributions and your efforts toward a, a fundraising campaign that was that was going on. Uh, uh, the Honorable Lady Jessica Osprey, uh, out of who now lives in Trimerius, was doing a uh, sticker sale thing for her newcomers fund, and it was a tiaras versus tacos competition. Um, and certain certain Vikings decided to throw the gauntlet down on the side of tacos, and yes, Her Majesty was not pleased. Well, you know, it did accomplish what I wanted it to, which is. Um, from what I saw, the number of people who jumped in to start pitching in on one side or the other just blew up for her. And yep. that was exactly what I wanted to see happen. So, so sometimes it's, you, guys, you just got to sort of prime the, prime the pump a little bit there. And you, you did that. Uh, it's your turn, sir. There we go. And yeah, so uh, uh, Catherine has a thing. It's a... If you want uh, the board and table games from Bell, you can get it on Abe Books for about six bucks. So if you don't want to nice. see it on, there you go. Um, but yeah, so it's a great book. So much information. It has not only historical stuff in it, but it also has the uh, a couple of different rule sets for each game. Um, this is actually, this is a reprinting from Dover Books. Yeah, it's a Dover publication that is both volume one and volume two in a single book, uh, which I, I like because there's a, basically it's a, it's a two for one. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it is your go, sir. Thank you. So a couple things I found out while researching this game. Um, one, two, three, four. So there are uh, – so the rules we're using tonight are is my actual modification from even from what Bell wrote. Um, so the, actually the only, th the only thing I modified out of Bell's version was that um, on uh, on a four, you could choose to enter a piece instead of on a one. Um Every other rule set I found was you start a new piece on a one. Um, and I will stop you right there for a moment, Fikin. Before you get your bonus turn, uh, that piece will actually slide all the way back down that pipe to your starting point. Because those, oh, those it, do work both as chutes and ladders. I just slid down. Oh, you slid the other way. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to never finish. If I slide back and forth. I, I just I, I was looking over here and I looked back. My apologies, sir. <laughs> no problem. You're doing so well and already beating me handily. So I was trying to you know bring you back a little. Um, <laughs> anyways, okay. So yeah. So one of the things that Bell wrote was that it, on a four you brought a new piece out instead of a one. But every other rule set I found, it was a, a new piece that started on a one. Um, so I thought that was a weird uh, variation that Bell had. So I modified it back to the one because that made more sense to me. Um, the other thing that I've done differently with the boards that I've seen. So, so the board, you'll notice this one has the gold spaces. It also has the onks on it. I, there were some boards that had also had spaces marked with um, like dashed lines on some of the gold spaces that were negative spaces. So you would actually lose a turn. Uh, actually, hold on. I get a slot away back. There you go. Um, you would actually lose a turn on one of those spaces as opposed to gaining a turn on one of those spaces. Uh, the particular board I found didn't have any of those, so I choose to omit those from the, from this rule set. Um, also, it, that ends up just gumming up the works. Um, so even though you land on the gold, which would give you an extra turn, you slide all the way back? Yes, because you don't stop there. So if, if you land on the gold on that end of the stripe and go backwards, the actual space you're stopping on is a white space. 
Gotcha. Just one of those uh, rule clarifications. Make sure I understand and anyone else. Yeah, that's one of those sort of like uh, odd points there. Of it's a it's, it matters the space you you finish on or you you land on. I'm gonna pull up the Facebook live stream. Make sure we've got stuff coming from over there. I only see YouTube comments currently. And so far, I'm not doing well, which is, you know, not surprising. I mean, that's par for the course with you playing. Pretty much, yeah. Let's see. I, 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 I keep getting fours, but that one, two, three, four, which slides me back to there. So I'm back on a two. That is, uh, that is an annoying rule for... Um, you know, congratulations. You don't actually get these uh, spaces. Right. That, that's like being promised a cookie and then not getting it. Right. Yeah. It's a guy with a four. Oh, but it's not. Oh. Well. I'll take what I can get. Get him off that first one so I can actually have another. So I see, I see uh, Master Brian from the Ontario He's asking if I'm doing an Egyptian theme in February. Um, I mean, I guess I so actually saw, I haven't I haven't picked my other game for February yet, so I guess I could do an Egyptian themes. Uh, theme type. I guess we did just do Egyptian in the end of January because we did the, uh, the Mayhem, which is also an Egyptian game. There's just so many good Egyptian games. Uh, and like e Egypt really loved race games, and I love a race game, so I can't help. And them. their counting games, they did love those too. Right? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a lot of like their their race games were often counting games too, because it was a matter of a, like it, there is literally no strategy to a lot of these games. You're just sort of um, bouncing around a board, but it's it, well, you know, uh, Christina. We're using Roll Twenty, yeah. um, which is what's letting us go ahead and. Uh, both of us move our pieces on the board. Yep. So, yeah. So, Roll20, for those who don't know, uh, if anybody's ever played D&D &D, uh, online, Roll20 is an amazing application for that. It's usually used for role-playing games. Uh, but uh, basically, because you can put maps in there and uh, sort of anything is an overlay. So, so what I did here is I, I literally took a picture of the board game or of the board and made it a map. Uh, so, so, basically, we're, you know, as if we were D&D &D characters moving around a map. Um, and then I just load in monsters the same way you load in monsters for D&D. &D. Um, and then we're both logged into that over on one screen, and we've got the StreamYard uh, broadcasting from the other screen. So a ton of fun. Uh, makes it uh, – it's a little hard to set up initially, but once you have it set up, it's uh, really easy to use. Um, I think it's from, – from my opinion, it's user-friendly, and I, I haven't had a user that's had a problem using it uh, in the streams we've done. I mean, especially for when we did Liar's Dice, I don't know any um, software that would have made us be able to make that work um, as well as it did. Right. Um, yeah, so for anybody who hasn't caught, didn't catch that episode with the, the Westies, uh, Liar's Dice was a was a feat of engineering from from Viking, actually. That was that took us a minute to figure out how to do. It took a lot of uh, backstage work to really make it make the buttons all, uh, all go because because of you have to be able to both roll dice and look at them and not let anybody else see them at the same time. And, and Roll20 is a very public game, so we had to figure out a way to do that, but also make it visually interesting for the viewers. So, And uh, we have to give credit to the wonderful Runa who helped make all that work. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, it took it took Fikin and Runa in the backstage to, to make sure to, to get it done quick enough, uh, and then me on the stage, on, on, on the camera, actually doing the hosting uh, was, uh, yeah, was a lot going on. That was that was a fun night. I I, I love my Westies, man. They are a, they're a rowdy bunch of folk. I, I'm actually I'm actually sad that I, I didn't uh, because I was I was so busy between streams. I didn't get. I, I'm I'm using my old cup tonight, uh, which is the one I use like mundanely. Uh, I usually have my my Westie mug that the or my, my feed the Ravens mug that my Westie friends gave me. Um, I'm I'm sad I don't have it. Oh excuse me. All right. I don't, I don't know. If, see, keep rolling fours and it's not helpful. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's get moving in. 
There we go. Uh, so this this one of those games like so I, I like this version of this game from a uh, a simplicity standpoint. It's it's very easy to learn. I think uh, a couple of the other versions that I found in Pounds and Jackals were uh, I was having trouble when I initially read them for picking the rules up. Like I, like I understood a lot of the pieces, but there were some of the mechanics that were just a little off. Um, and I always look for when I'm looking for games, especially for when I'm trying to look to teach them that are simple to learn and easy to pick up uh, on the fly at an event. And especially when you've been drinking, which is an important part of uh, any gaming. So three, and I slide. Yep. And a bonus. And, uh, Katie says she votes for twelve men, Morris. Um, you, you know, Catherine. I, so okay, so, so you're, you're, I think you're requesting twelve men, Morris, from my other game this month. I don't know that I've ever done twelve men, Morris. I'll have to uh, I'll have to look into that. I will uh, I will check on that. I know you it exists. I never played Twelve Men's Morris. You mention it in passing, I believe, in your class on it. Right. Yeah. I I I, just, I know it exists. I've just never actually played it. But so I, I maybe I have to correct that. All right. Uh, th hey, look! I get a bonus turn. One, two, three. B -b -b bonus turn. All right. Oh. Four. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, and four. There we go. All right. Now we're, now we're getting some motion. Also, I see somebody from the Outlands has joined us in the in the in the chat. I'm assuming that's probably sh the uh, Shyla actually out there. Um, I'll have to teach her how to change her uh, uh, her YouTube account login so that she's showing up as her and not the Outlands because that's funny. Um, no, literally the kingdom itself. Yes, yeah, you know, the entire kingdom is watching. I, you know, I'm okay with that. I'll take that. So we have seven viewers right now, but one of them is the is the entirety of the Outlands. That that's that is my most high, that is my highest viewer count I've had. I'll take it. You know, it's one of the things I appreciate you, about you, Fike, and you always say uh, you have that uh, <laughs> different look on life. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's always the better look on life, but it's definitely a different one. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, don't, don't give me too much credit. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, your turn, sir. Yes, okay, so yeah, 12 Minutes Morris is in uh, Alfonso X's Book of Games. Um, and yeah, he talks about it, but does he actually show it in there? I'll have to look it up. God, it's been, it's, it's been a minute. Like, I, I've been a, I haven't been in Alfonso's book in a while, so I, I've been too busy being in, in, uh, in, in Bell's tome of goodness. Also, I mean, I'll, I'll apologize to Shyla. I, I keep clicking buttons. I'm, I'm specifically trying not to touch the comments tonight, so I've, I let Shyla do it. And it is very difficult as someone who's used to running their own shows to not like push all the buttons. So I'm doing a terrible job of teaching her tonight. But uh, you know, I guess I, I, I'm hoping she's learning something in the backstage there. All right, well, I got three dudes on the board now. We're making progress. You know, speaking of Alfonso's book of games, so something I'm working on, I'll, I'll, since, since I can talk about his woodworking projects, I'll announce my woodworking projects because it also involves my peer, oddly enough, uh, my peer being a dame or Darth Sabella. Um, so she runs the Bad Baroness uh, buttons and things. Uh, and I'm going to be having offering here soon. So my game boards that I'm doing uh, for the patrons, uh, which will be getting upgraded. Any patrons out there watching, you're, you're going to get better game boards next month. Uh, I'm sorry that the game boards were less than I wanted to this month, but I have some new game boards coming out and uh, I will be offering game boards in Sabella's shop, uh, hopefully probably by the end of next month. Um, not only that, it will come with a, a set of rules that will go into Calbarter's book of games. Um, so I figured since I was going to be doing all these games, I, I write, you know, sort of write my own rule sets anyways and adjust them. I might as well sort of publish my own book. Uh, I'm not actually going to probably publish a book, but you will have a set of rules that you can compile into your own Calvary book of games. If you wanted to, I have information on how to do that. What book publishing? Yeah. Surprisingly affordable. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. I might, what's, yeah. what's I get a, so my goal was to have it, uh, have all of them be individually pressed, like individually printed so that when I played with someone, I could just hand them that rule set. 
and mm-hmm. they could like go put it in a binder with the rest of them, right? So that they could sort of over time accumulate the games. So that when I add a new one, I can just, you know, clip it into the binder. I'm not having to like reprint the entire book. Um, but I do, I suppose if I got like, you know, a hundred or some sort of number of games, I could eventually print them. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll chat about that. That's a, that's not a terrible idea. Okay. Um, I guess it is. Now, admittedly, I do have a, a, a sort of a magnum opus project plan for the distant future. Like my, uh, my Laurel doctorate project for gaming. Uh, and it's going to be to literally compile the games uh, and, and then have them illuminated and calligraphed as if they were from the time period they came from, or at least of a style of it, similar to that. So, you know, Egyptian games would look like Egyptian scroll, scribe wrote them. Um, you know, Norse games look like Norse scribe wrote them, that sort of thing. Um, so as if I had traveled to these times and gathered these games together. Uh, which is essentially what uh, Alfonso did with his book of games is he sort of compiled all of them together and had his uh, band of merry scribes retranscribe them. Um, so that's my goal is to do that one day. It is, it is a uh, a lofty and far away goal currently. Oh, we have a new question. Do we? Where is it? it oh, appears- I'm not seeing Facebook game. That's why. Okay. All right, so Shyla has asked, uh, what, is, what is your favorite board game? What, uh, all right, it's Fikin, what is your favorite board game? Well, I'm, well, I'm moving over here. Um, I am actually a big fan of Catan. Yes. It, now, it is also up there with Monopoly level. Oh, my God, flip the table over. Um, but for a board game that is just a lot of fun and really requires some you know, creativity across multiple levels to uh, play. It's definitely, um, yeah. I agree. Yeah, Catan's a really good game. Um, it, it's also another one that's easy to learn. It's your turn, by the way. Uh, it's another one that's really easy to learn. And this is, so for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Settlers of Catan is a, is a modern board game. Uh, it's based on an island and you're sort of, uh, you're, you're building settlements and cities to further your goal. Um, but I think it's actually a really easy game to learn, but it's a resource management uh, accumulation game. I enjoy that. Uh, my favorite modern board game currently is Gloomhaven. Uh, anybody who's never played Gloomhaven, first of all, get ready to spend about $120 because it is a, and and you have to have uh, a strong back to lift the box. I think the box weighs about 50 pounds. Uh, it is a chunky box. Um, but it is a, uh, actually it's a role-playing board game. Uh, it's a, it's card based and it is a ton of fun. The girls and I've been playing it, uh, about six hours a weekend. Um, and we, uh, are a little addicted, I'd say, but it's, it's a legacy game. So it sort of builds on as you play and, and it's, uh, you get to write your own stories. It's a, it's, it is a ton of fun though. So that is, that is my current, uh, obsession, I guess. Two, three. Uh, what about what about medieval board games? Um, what is your favorite medieval board game, or you know, period game, not necessarily medieval? Okay, I'm going to make you take back your turn. Why? Because you want to move your hydra and get an no, extra. No, no, no. I, I see it now, and I screwed up. Move along. Okay, I was going to no, give you. That's me. Hey, if I if I can't host a show and play a game, then I don't deserve to win. That don't 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 try to cheat for me. No. But yes, you're right. I screwed up. Anybody who didn't do that, I will point it out now. I should have moved this Hydra three spaces to here and could have got a bonus turn. And also would have blocked Viking from going there. So now he gets a bonus turn. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh Sifa says it's the Gloomhaven is the best heart attack she voluntarily seeks out. Because, yeah, it, it, that is a game that it is definitely not for the faint of heart. Uh, when we win, it is by the skin of our teeth. It is like it is. It, we are always on the edge of losing, and which I think makes for a great game. Because it, it's a it's a so it's, it's a cooperative. It's cooperative versus the board game um, versus a uh, competitive thing. Um, but let's see, medieval games. Yeah. Um, I like Talbot. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, because, you know, Talbot is a smaller board version of um, Taff, of Hintafel. 
Right. Nefotafel, Nefotafel. Yeah, yeah nef Nefotafel. 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 Okay. Um, but it's a little bit um, less unwieldy for me. Uh, Nefotafel gives me a little bit more of a challenge, but I mean, any of those is a lot of fun. And yeah, te yeah, I'll, Tebla is an easy one to learn how to play topple and, and it sort of gives you the you figure out the sort of the functions of the asymmetrical sides and then you can sort of upgrade to playing topple. All right, uh, so we have a question coming in from uh, from from the audience here. What happens if you both land on the same space? Well, in fact, we cannot. Uh, so in in this version, and this is a variation from this version from from the other versions. Uh, in this version, we are not allowed to land on the same space. So if uh, if that is the only movement, then you just lose your turn, or you can't move that piece. Um, in uh, some of the other versions, if you land on the piece, it uh, knocks it off the board, um, or it sort of knocks it back to start, like uh, like trouble or sorry or those kind of games. Uh, but this version is not as is a blocking mechanic versus a capture mechanic. Uh, so. Catherine says Gluckhouse for the win. Uh, I agree. Gluckhouse is a good game. Um, although not my favorite. Uh, my favorite dice game currently is actually Ship Captain Crew. Uh, the one the Westies taught me. I, I like that game. Uh, I also like Shut the Box. Another good dice game. But my favorite uh, probably medieval board game is... Man. Uh, the, the, the one that I'm probably the... the is most frustrated with, but love to play the most is, is actually the role game of Earth. Um, it is a, a simple race game. There's some there's some con there's some contested spaces in the middle, and you don't know that you've won until like the last turn. Like there is no like even if you're out in front, you're like oh, I'm three pieces ahead. You can still lose that game, uh, and I, I I appreciate that about a board game. All right, I got a double bonus turn. Let's see three. All right, so yeah, so here, here's a good example. So I roll a three, so I can't move this piece up here because it would land on the same space that Fikin's currently occupying, so I, ha I have to move one of my other pieces. So one, two, three. Uh, I, I don't see it being a problem uh, until probably later in the game, but because you do, you are required to move in this game, the, there may be a point where one of us is forced to make a negative move, uh, one that we don't want to make, even if, you know, uh, like there's a, I, I can see on that last space you're coming in, you hit that slide out, and you're like, oh crap, now I'm back on the other things. Whereas as opposed, to you just don't want to move on that space. So that's one of those could be could matter later more than now. Two, oh two, oh I'm not gonna do that. Uh, you know, we'll go one and two. Yeah. Um, I cut another variation you could do on this one. Uh, so you actually could start all five pieces on the board and just move them off as you wanted to. Uh, that would speed the game up a little bit. So if you're playing with children uh, or even newer players, you could start all five pieces off in the, in the bases on either side and just move them out as as your uh, sort of movement allows. Um, that's an option. Um, one of the other variations I found that was really interesting was the... Uh, and this, this is actually, I think, the, the more traditional Hounds and Jackals game is that the pieces can't pass each other. So the first piece moves out, and when it, mo when it moves past, I think, uh, hole 15, which is that third, or the second, in this case, the second gold space on either side, then you can bring your second piece on. And then when that piece, when, when the next time a piece moves past, the you bring a third piece on, and you keep doing that until your pieces are all on or whatever. Um, but the pieces have to remain, stay in order or they can't pass each other except via like the 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 shoots. So if one of them goes down the shoot, it happens to go behind you know, piece one goes behind piece two, then that's okay. But they can't just on the regular path go past each other, which I thought was a really weird rule, uh, but could make for a, for an uh, interesting uh, sort of uh, you know play style to deal with. Let's see three. We'll go one, two, three. Go ahead and get this guy moving over there. Oh, 
All right, so we got another question from uh, from from the backstage there. Uh, what is the best board and drinking game? Um, all of them. Anyone you have a drink with, frankly. Um, that's actually one. I think it, it, any game you, if you can play it, you can play it drunk. Um, but to to answer the more specific question, uh, the best board and drinking game. Um, Gluckhouse is a good example of that. Gluckhouse is a game that's simple enough you can play while you're smashed. Um, and but the I'm trying to think of a game. Oh, uh, so uh, if you've ever played Game of the Goose in Meridies, uh Game of the Goose, whereas it's not traditionally a drinking game. Um, one of the things that we do here in this kingdom when we play it is they modify it. Every time someone wins or gets to the end, instead of the game ending, they just add a, a drinking rule. Some rule, some drinking rule to the game, which then they just keep playing and go. And when you have 10 or 12 people playing in this game, on, you know, a giant board, people start getting drunk very quickly. Two, three, four. So, yeah, that's a good one. But you find any favorite drinking game on a. Um, drunken chess is always fun. Oh, the like with the shots, you lose a piece, take a shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very quickly start losing more pieces, right. I know a couple of nights, like, you know, hey, if we're going to play chess, we might as well play drunken chess, right? All right. Let's see. Four. No good options. One, two, three, four. I feel like we're actually not going to get to finish this in our standard hour tonight. We'll see where we're at here in about 20 minutes or so. We started late, so I don't mind running a little late. Um. I don't want to keep fiking from his uh his poetry work, but I think he can spare another half hour or so. I can spare a little bit of time anyway. I know you've been busy with your uh, your mundane studies recently, so I'm sure you appreciate a, a nice board game break. Yeah, I'm actually uh, quite uh, happy to say that I'm caught up, which is why when the weather was actually uh, mildly cooperative today, I ran out to my workshop and did a whole lot of woodworking before the weather turns right back to being, well. Right, before, before it turns crappy again, yeah. Oh, you. Yeah, I did that. That was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that actually brings up an interesting rule point right there. If you occupy my first position, how do I bring pieces on the board? And that's not something that's covered in the rule set, actually. I would assume that you, that you can bring it to any of your pieces. You just bring it one further. Just go to the next available space. I, I otherwise, as, as soon as I got one in there, you would automatically lose right. if you didn't have all of them out. Right. Uh, uh, that's actually an interesting point. I didn't consider that. Now, the next interesting question is what happens if I line up lines one through four? Um, I line up um, – let's see if you see it. Then I, I would need a five to get out, which we can't roll on the D four. Yeah, right. Um, then yeah, I, you know what? If you can do that, we'll call it. We'll call it a win. How about that? <laughs> okay, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's a you know. Okay. But yeah, that's that's something. That, again, it's, so we we talk about a lot on this channel that that. These games are so flexible. I think we can do. You know, we always sort of adjust them to be whatever is most appropriate for the for the game, whatever you're playing with. Uh, you know, have fun with it. So find a rule set that works for you, and and then and go with it. One, two, three. Bonus turn. One, well, okay. So I can't bring a new piece on because I've already got a guy there. I can't move that piece one. Uh, we'll get this guy moving. Okay. Two. Mm. 
But yeah, it's a uh, one of the things I one of the reasons I think I really enjoy the historical board games is it it is a it is a work of experimental archaeology, right? A lot of people have done a lot of work over the years in various, like, you know, how to do textile things. Like, people, that's what they do. Like, you research how to redo the things. Part of what I enjoy about the board games is, is getting to play them and then going, hmm, that ain't right. Something about this game isn't right and making those adjustments. Um, because so much of what we're looking at is somebody guessed. One, two, three, four, and they're, and they're ooh, look at this. Watch down the pipe. Wee! Nice. Good stuff. Oh. Good. Yeah. Catching up, sir. We thought you were ahead. There we go. Um, which is like I, I talk about all the time, and, I, and, and it, it, it is a rant of mine. Like, the rules for Gluckhouse are wrong. Uh, every rule I've said I've ever seen for Gluckhouse is incorrect. Ba based on the boards I've seen and the, and the way it's played, it doesn't make, make any sense. That most All the boards have, a, have the seven as the same size as the other spaces. And yet the seven is usually ends up being piled with, with, with coins, and the other spaces have one on them. That is not a logical layout for that board. That's a uh, that, that, that's a, a, a rant project I have at some point. I've got a, a paper I've got to write. But if I talk about it enough, eventually I'll actually write it. All right, you've already got all your pieces on the board, so I'm not worried about trying to block you in, but I am going to block that space right there for at least a hot minute. One, two, three. Because there's not a whole lot of strategy to this game. There is some of like, you know, keeping a hold of some of those strategic points you know, slows you down a little bit. And two. And two. One, two. Right. So, uh, so Catherine says she makes hers bigger. I agree. And, and whenever I design a, a, a Gluckhouse board, I always make the seven a large space in the middle and uh, and design the other ones around it because that makes sense of how. And, and again, it's how we play Gluckhouse, but it's also every rule set I've ever seen for Gluckhouse. It makes sense for the seven to be a bigger space. Uh, I think the one I designed for uh, for the Cowboys Corner board games set is the seven is a larger space. Like it's a and, and and I do mine in circles instead of uh like the I, I get it the, the whole house of fortune thing is supposed to be a house, um, and I did one that was pagoda shape for a, a custom order, um, but I think for ease of use uh, I just made mine in circles. Three. Oh, what's moving? Get one, two, three. Um. Catherine, if you have, uh, she says that some of the surrounding boards have a bigger seven space. If you have uh, those, please send those to me. I have never seen one with a larger, with a obviously larger seven space on it. So please send those my way. Because yeah, that is definitely something I want to look at because the ones I have seen don't, and that's baffled me. All right. Oh, I was almost at one. Three, what can I do with a three? Nothing useful. One, two, three. So if you want to design your own board for this, you could. You could always, you know, sort of keep the idea, but change up the uh, the lines, change up your, um, you know, which spaces your bonus spaces, add some negative spaces. Um, so you could re-theme it to like this. Obviously, this, you know, most of these are Egyptian themed, uh, but you could re-theme it to be a, a Viking sort of uh, a Norse themed one with a uh, you know shields and skulls or something of that nature. A three, a three, you say? I don't need a three. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. 
I do like that uh, this game is one of those weird ones that, because it's it's like it has three different names depending on where you look it up at. When I was first looking it up in, in Bell's book, I was looking for Hounds and Jackals, and I was like, I don't see, like, what, what, how is Hounds and Jackals not in this book? And I was like, wait, what's the palm tree game? Because I, I was looking at one of the boards as a palm tree, and I was like, I wonder. And sure enough, that's where I found it. So, it, uh, which is an interesting note for doing any research is make sure when you're doing any research on uh, historical gaming or really anything that you, uh, consider alternative names for stuff because, Things could often have the wrong names or, or names different than what you expected. Well, let's see. Oh. Just thought about something. So I was just, I was just looking at a thing of um, if I... It's so like right now, because I'm occupying one end of the chute over there, because I sleep mm -hmm. down it. If I hit the other end, I can't slide down it. And then you get the bonus. So that's so that's in that's an option. The other option would be is that I can't I can't use that as a move. It's no longer a legal move because I can't finish the movement. Right? That's one of those like it could go either way. But yeah, but I, I like that that it just blocks me to be there and I get the bonus turn instead. That works. I mean, that's what I would go with because to me, if if you have blocked yourself so you can't go down the slide, then you're you have stopped on that spot. Therefore, right. it satisfies the condition to. Uh, sure. Yeah, I track that. One. Ooh, nice, nice piece. Ba Bam. Actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? No, we're gonna. We're over here. We're gonna go b -b bonus turn. That bonus turn. Give me another one. Give me another one. Come on. Give me another one. No, nope, that's a four. That is very much not a one. Let's see. One, two, three, and four. Oh, you, sir. <sighs> well, I can't go there. Move forward because, and it is on you. Excellent, thank you. All right, we got a two. What can I do with the two? I just can't move that guy because that guy's there. Oh, what is this? Uh, I'm gonna go. Oh, well, hey, look. Speaking of one, two, hit the gold square. I can't slide down the pipe because I've got my guy there. So, b -b bonus turn. How about that? And a one. Well, then, oh, lucky. You like that? We'll bring that last no, guy. I, in. I really don't. But There we go. Okay. Oh, you, sir. I have all my pieces on the board. And here I was going to tell you about the mead that I um, am supposed to be bottling soon. But now I'm, I'm not sure I want to. You're going you're to hold out on me, Spikes? <laughs> okay, you know what? You can keep your mead. I'm not sure I want to tell you about the blood orange mead. You know what? You can keep your blood orange mead. Just send me some more pirate punch. I, I'm I'm woefully low on citrus at the moment, and I I'm, I need my vitamin C, sir. Yeah, we can't have you getting scurvy. That's right. <laughs> man, you, so yeah. Anybody who doesn't know Fiken, uh when when we're back to events again, find this man at an event and find some get some of his alcohol. It is amazing. Um. Well, I do have the um, cider going to uh, satisfy uh, the demands of your uh, ever-demanding peer. Good. Keep, keep her happy. I'd appreciate you. Um, that was a fun one that she mentioned trying to find someone who's doing cider. And I was like, I've been looking for, you know, half an excuse to do cider anyway. So I'm, I'm not going to say I threw you under that bus, but I might have had something to do with that. Okay, one. Yeah, I may as well get myself in that spot before. I'm before it goes away right now. Four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. 
so this, uh, like backgammon, has one of those points where once all of our pieces have sort of crossed each other, it becomes very much just a dice rolling, who can roll the dice the fastest. Um, because because we don't have the, the idea of this where you get knocked off the board with this one, it's a little less, uh, we're a little less antagonistic with it. But the uh, there is still going to be that point where we no longer are interacting and it's just a matter of, of who has the luckiest dice rolls. There's we have no effect on each other at all. Um, yeah, and that's not far off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. I've, I've still got two pieces on my side of the board. So, um, ooh, two. I'm gonna go one and a two and slide right on up that pipe. And a b -b bonus turn. That's a one. We'll move this guy right there and get a, a bonus turn. I don't know why I started doing that the other day, but I did. Four. Uh, that's a three. You know what? Sure, we'll go one, two, three, and four. That. There we go. How are you, sir? Oh man, yeah, blood orange meat. That sounds really good. I, I, I have, a, and I have a feeling you'll do, you'll do well at that. You know, but I, I, admittedly, I'm looking forward to the cider more. Um, yeah, the cider. Um, actually, we uh, we tried it um, when we did our last racking, mm -hmm. and um, my wife uh, Frida um, said that it reminds her that the English cider is exactly like what she had when she was in London many years ago oh nice so it is a, a nice english cider and the um more uh, traditional american cider is about what you'd expect um better than you know the uh, malt beverage that uh, just has a little apple flavor thrown in there right but interesting and i do have a sicer going what 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 the hell is a sicer? Sicer is a mead made with. I haven't made my move yet. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Not a big deal. You just roll way ahead of me. Um, sicer is a mead made with uh, cider. Oh, okay. So, you, so interesting. You, instead of using water, you use cider. So you have more sugars for the yeast to get, and you have the apple um, tones. Um, that works. Okay. And a three. One, two, and three. Four. One, two, three, four, which slides me back, but it gets me a b -b bonus turn. Four. Uh, we'll go one, two, not there. Actually, you know what? We'll do, we'll do that. One, two, three, four, which would slide me down the pipe, but you're occupying the other end of it. So. Okay. Fun, fun little rule quirk there. I like that. One. Well, let's get him off there. Maybe I can get another one and get a bonus turn here. Before you move. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. One. All right. Well, can't do that. Can't do that. And then we'll do. We'll do that. Let's slide that guy in there. There you go. Okay. One. No. There you go. Get your bonus turn. There's a 25% chance that wasn't going to happen, but you know. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't do much with it. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> didn't get very far. All right. Let's see. A three, a one, a two, a one, two, three. There we go. 
So, what else is coming up on Cal Barter's Corner and and uh, K and K Productions in general? So, K and K Productions is very busy at the moment. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we'll talk about some projects we got going on. So uh, obviously, we're late today because we just started a new show on the Outlands channels. Uh, so uh, the Outlands is doing peering at the Outlands currently. Uh, so they're doing it's a, a really weird schedule. So go look at the Kingdom of the Outlands or Peering at the Outlands uh, on Facebook and look up those schedules. Uh, basically, they're having one of their peers interview another peer from their group. Um, and I'm uh, so KK Productions is hosting that, but after hopefully these first couple of shows, I will not have to be doing any tech for it. Uh, Shyla and Edric, who are their social media officers, are going to be taking that over from me uh, once we get them trained up. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun today. The first episode was really great. Uh, Sir Finn did a really good job um, sort of setting the bar for them. And uh, I did some of my first intro work. I actually made the intro for them myself for that show. So if you go watch that and tell me how awesome my intro looks. It, it is, it's it's decent. Uh, I'm not happy with it yet, but uh, I'm going to do some tweaking on it. Um, I see, as far as that, let's see, we've got, uh, what else coming up? So I'm, try I'm trying to think of all the other channels where I do mine. So uh, Misty History will be starting soon. Uh, so I'm, I'm working with Her Highness of the Mists to do a uh, history show for the for the Principality. So she's uh, fairly new to the Principality out there, even though she's the princess. Um, she realized she didn't know a whole lot about their history and wanted to do some digging on it and figured other people might enjoy that. So... Uh, we'll be doing that. that. That'll be recorded, not live. And we'll get posted out on their social media channels uh, once it's produced. Um, I'm going to be working with uh, Jean Genevieve Vendome. And I'm probably butchering her name. Sorry about that, Tony. Um, we're going to be working on a project here in the near future called... Uh, I, had, I, had a cool, I had a cool name for it. Um, I don't know. Basically, we're, we're, we're doing memorable people. So, if, so a, a important people in history. So if there's somebody out there that you think of, when you think of historical figures, uh, and you're like, man, I really wish people knew more about this guy. Uh, so like, we're going to be doing like 10 minute talks on uh, an important person in history. Uh, so I'll be doing one on Herodotus, which is Herodotus is the uh, is an author uh, from the so the Greek. He's, the, he's a Greek. He's a Greek author. He's the a father of lies. Man. What's that? He's the father of lies. He's in fact the father of lies. Correct. Uh, he did a lot of traveling and he wrote a lot of stories. Uh, what, he, he is the predominant author and why we know things about the Scythian culture, which is my current uh, uh, cultural obsession. Um, but yes, he does tell a lot of things through an uh, interesting lens. So, But, but he's a, a really neat character, so I'll, I'll be doing a talk on him. Uh, but yeah, so if you have one out there, if you if you think of somebody from your uh, persona time or, or just a, a neat character, reach out to us on Calvary's Corner. And I'll connect you with the host for that, and we'll get you set up to record one of those because that's gonna be a lot of fun to do. Um, as far as on Calber's Corner, though, we have a couple episodes coming up. Obviously, uh, so this Sunday for Valentine's Day, I'm gonna be joined by my lovely ladies. Uh, we'll be talking about significant others in the SCA. Um, you know, obviously, we all work together and we all support each other in our various arts and pursuits and in stuff. So we figured it was it was an appropriate time to for us to sit down and just have a chat about sort of what we do and how we support each other and uh, hope to have some folks join us in the comments who tell us how they support each other, their significant others and partners and whatnot. Um, two, three. Uh, and, and you'll get to hear me tell the story about how I uh, how I learned the difference of tight, not taught. Because tight and taught are two very different things. So if you want to hear that story, tune in Sunday. Uh, what else we got coming up? Um, so next Sunday, of course, we'll have What Makes a Night with Duke Sean. Or we'll be joined by Sir Tierlock. Uh, talking about looking the part. Uh, I love that series. I've really enjoyed doing that um, and just sort of getting to dig in some of that sort of the nitty gritty of, of knighthood uh, that is the not fighting points. Uh, and we've you so have, far, sorry, you have had some amazing guests on there. Yeah. I got to say, you've they've been really insightful and really helped focus on you know, what makes a night? Yeah, <laughs> right? And yeah, and I have to give uh, full credit to, to Duke Sean for that. With, with the exception of, of, of Sir Joffrey, uh, sh those are all Sean's guests. Um, they're all friends of his or knights he knows. Um, but yeah, no, stellar guests. Just really great conversations that they've had on there. Um, you know, but yeah, it, I, I've really enjoyed that. Just because, I mean, 
and we enjoy talking stick and I always enjoy getting in armor and beating the crap out of our friends, but really getting into some of those, like the ideas of being a knight in the SCA. Um, Cause we can, we can talk about chivalry and the, the, the noble virtues and all this sort of like high and lofty goals. But when you really want to get down to like what it means today, it's a really interesting conversation. So, um, Oh, actually, speaking of knights, uh, special note, anybody who likes knights and talking to two knights, uh, yours truly will be hosting Ask the Knights Live tomorrow. Uh, Baron Logan is out of town and uh, he's dealing with some family business and asked, has asked me to take over the show for him for the night. So uh, I'll be inter interviewing two Meridian Knights, Sir Pietro and Sir Chinwa. Um, so anybody knows Sir Pietro is the, the bumblebee of Meridiers. So he... Uh, that should be a fun. Those they're, they're both characters in their own right. One, two, three. Bonus turn, um, and are, are, are really good friends. And I always like seeing two good friends on a show like that because they they get talking and picking each other. And uh, you know, we as the host sort of just have to sit back and let let the magic happen. So, one, two, three. Bonus turn. I should talk more often. I, I do. I do better when I'm talking. Apparently, one. Oh man, how do I do that? So yeah, I think that's all the things. Did I miss anything, Fagin? <laughs> um, the only other thing I can think of is that uh, K&K Productions is always looking for people who are interested in doing a show. If they have an idea, even if it's an idea that's not fully developed, yep. they're here to help um, see and promote how they can to help bring that um, to the forefront if there's something you want to teach people. There you go. Oh, that's actually yeah. Speaking of teaching, so yeah, uh, definitely think of things that are not that are not just uh, like shows, right? So we have shows like this that are sort of entertaining or interviews that are uh, just interesting. The classes. Uh, so Toka um, Thor Kotlin Ingvar's daughter from out in the in the west somewhere. She's I think she's in Sanagua. Um, she's actually started a, a channel called Toka's Tech Tips uh, that she's doing at Google uh, educational classes. So something that came up in the comments one day about people not knowing how to use Google and other Google products. Um, and we're all in the age of technology right now in the SCA. So she's doing that. She's a Google certified educator. Uh, so she's recording videos uh, through the KK Productions platform and then putting those out there. Um, she's also doing stuff for her Barony. They're doing their weekly or monthly uh, ANS night classes. Uh, they're producing them via YouTube um, so that they can get them out to more people. Because some people are uh, are not as always able to get into Zooms or uh, don't want to get into Zooms, they can watch it on YouTube. So yeah, so if you want to teach a class or want to record a class or want to uh, record some lectures or or you know whatever, reach out. We we'd love to help help you uh, for your group, for you personally, for uh, you know your kingdom. You need to run a court if you're if you're if you're a landed baron baroness out there and want to run a court uh, through a platform like this. I'd love to help you. Uh, and if I if I don't have time, I have uh, some lovely other technical crew, Fikin, Nikon. Uh, now we've got folks from Allen's coming on to help. We we're all available. Something I, I need to to work on doing more is delegating. Um, I have trouble uh, letting go of the reins apparently, but I need to properly project manage this and get people access and make that happen. Well, you're going to have to because unfortunately, you're becoming a victim of your own success. Right, I know, right? Tonight was a was a, was an oops on my part. I had this booked out correctly because I, I I talked to Shyla. I was like, "Hey, first show's coming up. We need some training." We kept missing each other in, in sort of the training time we were going to do. Because um, basically, I told her, "Hey, come on, any one of the shows between now and then, I'll let you sort of backpack me, and then we'll sort of trade off." Um, and we just kept missing each other. So I said, "Okay, you know what? Your show's at six. My show's at eight. We're good. I'll run your first show." And then you can come run, you know, my show for me that night. And that was great until I logged on at six o'clock and I looked at the, sh the event and it said seven. And I was like, wait, what do you mean seven? And it's because six o'clock mountain time is not six o'clock central time. So time zones are hard. So, yeah, so that that's that is the the problem with that. Uh, but, yeah, I hope hoping to prevent that from happening in the future. That's why I, I brought uh, it's actually Nikon came on. Uh, he's took over fighting the world. Uh, another great channel, fighting the world. Look up if you're in the rapier or uh, in melee talk. Uh, that's run by Baron Wistrick uh, out of Southbounds, which I see you. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. So, Her Excellency Sneva is in the chat down there, talking about how I am great at streaming courts. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, I ran a court for Southbounds. Um, 
uh, back for Castle Wars, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I like doing courts on his because you can sort of uh, control the view and make it look a little prettier. Um, all credit goes out to our Zoom team for, for Meridiers. They've done a stellar job of getting courts put out and doing this in a, in a really crappy time. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's fun to do courts. But yeah, so that's yes, and so Nikon took over fighting the world because uh, obviously it kept falling on my Wednesday nights from from my channel uh, for for Witch Play Wednesday, so I couldn't do both shows. Um, also, three hours of melee talk is a bit much for me. I love Wistrick to death, uh, but him and him and Bruce can talk. Holy crap! Uh, I did not know what I was getting into when I first watched their show. I was like, "Oh, sure, I'll come run tech for you that night. We'll, we'll make this happen." He's like, "Okay." About an hour and a half, I was like, "I'm done. I'm done, Wistrick. This is dumb. I don't like rapier anymore. I'm never fighting rapier ever." Uh, but no, it's it's a it, but it's a great show. If you're into rapier and into melee talk, man, they've got some good information. Um, the two of them a collective wealth of knowledge, um, and then plus they have amazing guests. So, did you move your four, dude? I don't know. No, I did not. Um, one, two, three, four. Sorry, too busy talking. <laughs> I see. I see her excellency agreeing with me in the comments. Yes, Wister can talk a lot. I, uh, so actually, and actually, technically, their intro was the first intro I ever made. Um, but I literally went out to one of those like super sketchy free intro makers and recorded it in like ten minutes. Um, and it still has like the branding from the intro because I, I wasn't paying for it because I was just trying to get a filler intro in. Um, so I need to go back and now that I think about it, I need to go back and remake their intro for them. Um, but it's funny because I, I recorded my voice going "Welcome to." Fighting the world. And it's really cool looking, I thought. Uh, but I didn't tell Bruce and Wistrick I was doing it. So I just played it during the sort of a, you know, the intro to the show. So they both start their show just dying laughing because I, I gave them no warning for that. Um, which, you know, makes me happy. So three, uh, let's see. Uh, one, two, no, nope, can't do that. We'll go one, two, three. And actually, you know what? I have to actually correct myself again because actually, my first actual intro was for their Excellency Southdowns for their court. Uh, if you, I guess, because I guess technically that's an intro. Um, it was uh, I, I heralded them in the court with the standard sort of litany intro. That was actually my first intro I made. Um, I've gotten better since then. Well, that one, that one was pretty cool. All right. One, two, three, can't move there. One, two, three, can't move there. One, two, three, I can't move. You can't move? Let's, nope. let's double check this. Yeah, double check it. I can't move. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so I get to add your three to whatever I roll. No, you, so you just you get a separate, uh, basically you get a three as a bonus turn. Okay, I get a three, but I can't move. Anything. Oh, you can't move on a three either. Okay, then sure. Then roll, and you get to add it to your roll. I'm I'm okay with that. Because because it, it's it, so the 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 rule reads they get to add it to their move as a as as extra as an extra move, which to me sounded like a separate movement. Uh, but I can see where it also could just get added to the die roll, and I'm okay with either one of the answers. And we are approaching that uh, critical phase. Yep, yep, yep. We're we're about two moves out probably. One, I can move. Hooray! Uh, you know what? I'm actually not going to move there. I'm going to move over here. There you go. I think we're going to give about five more minutes, uh, and we'll see who has the most in their base by the end of that five minutes. We'll call it one fifteen. Um, our 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 viewer count is dwindling, so. I've noticed in these shows that, that either you have either viewers are stuck in it for the long term and they're there for the entire like three hour process or one hour is the is the mark. Um, three, let's see, you can go a one, a two, a three. But yeah, I think, uh, let's see, you, so you've got three in and two on your side, on my side of the board, at least. I've got two in and I'm still on your side of the board. So you, you right now are winning. 
Um, but this is one of those games that it could still go either way towards the end, especially right like because you have to have the exact number of uh, moves to get into the base. That last movement could literally take you, you know, three or four or five turns. And you have the advantage of having use more useful uh, bonus spaces following than I do. Oh, uh, true. Very true. Let's see. We'll go one, two, three, four. Although actually, I mean, realistically, it's the same difference. Like you, you've got, the, you've still got the two, the two shoots you can use. You've got, you know, at least. Uh, I guess yeah, you are past one of them. You're, you're past one of the two shoots with most of your guys. Three, four, and we are now there. Yep, there we go. All right, so now it's a matter of dice rolling. I mean, I guess it's it's been a matter of dice rolling the entire time. Um, it's a matter of uh, it's just numbers game at this point. Three. There we go. One, two, three, and I get a bonus turn. Four. Two, three, four. Uh, so, oh, another point actually uh, is so uh, we're using a D four, but you could also use a lot of the period ones used uh, four uh, dice sticks, which would give you a one, two, three, four, or five as an option. Uh, so since since the bonus space in this are five spaces apart, having that five as a movement option would actually change the game pretty drastically uh, because then there is an option to jump from bonus space to bonus space to bonus space. Um, so I think uh, this one used the, this this variation used a four sided die, um, but uh, you could very easily alter it and use the dice sticks for that. Uh, let's see. We'll go one, two, three. I just, I, I, I personally don't like using dice sticks because I end up tossing them across the room. Even the digital ones make me grumpy. Uh, if you are, so, uh, as I mentioned, coming soon to Bad Baroness, uh, Cal's Calvar's Corner board games. Uh, they will include both dice sticks and uh, dice as well. So I, I give you, the user, the option. All right. I'm going to couple more dice rolls here, then we're going to call it. I will I will admit my defeat, sadly. Uh, you can actually slide right down. No, go back the other way. What? What did I do? One, you can go three. one, two, three. Oh, four. you're right. Uh, you know, I'm uh, fine. Okay, one, two, three, four. You're right. All right. All right. <laughs> We're at the phase. We're giving you a fighting chance. Is just rude. It's just rude, Viking. That's what it is. It's just rude. Move your pieces. Well, see, see, this this is why. Like, see, I forget. I I don't invite you on the show for like six months, and I bring you back, and this is how you treat me, Viking. <laughs> I see how it is. Yeah, I know. I I don't just take advantage of you. It's horrible. Oh, no, no. See, there, there's a real reason this. If I give you um tips and try to do that, then if you beat me, I have the option to go. Yeah, you beat me, but only because <laughs> only because I helped you, right? Yeah. No, I I see, I see where you're at. I see, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. But now we're tied, though. So, and you're further along, but I mean. All right, we'll, we'll do this. So, since we are now tied at three, next piece in, we'll call the winner. How about that? I think that is a fair move. Since you're ahead of me right now, I've got to do some catching up. You just got like six bonus turns, and I hate you. All right, hold on. So, did you. Oh, did you hit the white and then go back to the gold? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. I, I missed the movement. I just I saw you ended up there. All right. One. Oh, look. One. Bonus turn. Two. Uh, you one. can get yourself locked in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, I could also just jump it over it, too, so. Since we're getting a four-sided die, we're, we're, I'm just as likely to roll a one versus a three or a four when I get to that end point. Yeah, fair enough. Now, if we were using dice sticks, then the probability does change that because you have more, a higher probability of rolling a two, a two, three, or 
yeah, two or a three, I think, versus you versus rolling a, a, a one or a four or a five. There's a there's a weird sort of bell curve in the dice sticks. One, two, three, b -b -b bonus turn. All right. I don't think I can mathematically get there, but one, two. Um, I'm really hoping you roll a two right now. A two would be lovely, because then you'd be forced to move backwards. That's a four. That's sad. Because that puts you into the base. What are you? What are you doing? No, no. Put your put your dupe. <sighs> All right. You got one last shot. Uh, are, you, are you gonna give me one more die? It doesn't. I, I literally can't get there, even with like I, it takes me three turns because we're rolling a four, so it's not mathematically possible. All right, Fikin, it has been a pleasure as always, sir. Thank you for coming on. And for our viewers who have stuck with us this long, thank you for putting up our ridiculousness. And sorry for again for starting late and having all the technical issues. Um, one of the things that I, I pride myself on is I, as I put a lot of effort in doing stuff for other people, and I often neglect my own things. And this is my my one thing that I've neglected a lot. Uh, but I thank you for sticking with me. So, all right, Fike, anything you want to plug before we sign off? No. Um... We already made a point of going over all those things that usually come at the end. Yeah, we covered all the shows. Um, so I guess the only thing I can say is remember to like us on Facebook, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring that bell notification so you um, find out about new updates, and uh, there's Cal Barter's Corner Patreon where you can get wonderful new um, rewards at patreon.com slash Corner. There you go. I like when my guests do the work for me. That's amazing. So thank you all for coming. This has been Calbar and Fikin in Calbar's Corner. Not everybody. Good night.